Hello Malty, Maverick, Maxillomandibulars. And thank you to Carl Evans for that mention. Introducing Ralphie Review 911 Extras. It's Extras. Having reviewed a quality spirit in my previous review, usually single malt whiskey, this is where I move on with the Extras to talk about stuff associated with bottles of good quality spirit that you, the malt makes, are probably going to be interested in. And I've had a number of requests recently saying, hey Ralphie, um, I'm really quite keen to create my own infinity bottle, my never ending bottle, my with me for life bottle, but I'm still not quite sure where to start. Could you keep me right? So. I have mentioned it several times, but I'm actually going to do a beginner's class in it. Later on, I'll do a master class, the more advanced class. Once that you've once you've got your infinity bottle up and running, um, and you've got it a few years, and it's relatively mature, how do you then manage it so as you maintain the quality whilst the flavour changes? But I'll come to that in another video. First of all, I want to explain what. An infinity bottle is and I'll introduce one to you. This is one I started in 2011, so over 10 years ago now, where I was near the end of a bottle of whiskey and then I started to fill it up again with other bottles and I noted on the labels in the back all the different bottles that I'd added to it and when I say added it could be a tiny amount perhaps a teaspoon, or it could be a larger amount. Perhaps I've added half a glass full. So that gives you an approximate size of the measures I've used. And thereafter, once I had added a few peated whiskies to my infinity bottle, drinking a wee bit, topping it up, drinking a wee bit, topping up some more, no rush, it's not something you're going to do in weeks or even months. This is a project that covers years and decades. And you're, the mission is that you're going to create something that nobody else in the world has and they can't buy. And here's the, here's the interesting bit, the really interesting bit, that the more you practice it, the better you get. And you're developing a timeline bottle incorporating all the good whiskies that you've chosen to add to that bottle over the years and the decades and as you get better and more experienced at it the chances are increasing that you're going to end up many years down the line with a bottle of whiskey which is actually superior in smell and taste and form to something that's been over branded with a very old age statement and an extremely high price tag being punted through marketing flannel from the international spirits industry. So I'm not talking about Scotch whiskey per se. Um, the way things are going, it could be antique mezcal, tequila, rum, 30, 40, 50 year old rum, um, you know, the usual script, oh, we, we, we didn't even know we had it. We happened to be just walking through the warehouse with our storm lanterns, you know, and, and within the, with the sound of the Caribbean in the background. Oh, my goodness, we just discovered a cask full of whiskey that was 40 years old and we couldn't believe how much rum was. So, start again. We discovered a cask of rum that we didn't, we'd forgotten all about it. And this was 40 years ago and we don't have any records or anything. Um, and, you know, this is really, really old for a rum and we can't believe how much we've got. So it's a, a limited exclusive edition uh, in a very fancy decanter out in the market. Um, and we're only asking, it's valued. That's what they'll tell you. Oh, yes, it's valued at $100,000, $200,000, $500,000, a million dollars, $2 million, whatever. Money, money's just a figure, it's just a number. And I know it seems like I'm exaggerating, but 
The closer you look at the industry around you, the more you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's happened in the past with a Scotch whisky distillery that suddenly discovered this um, this forgotten consignment of, of whisky and all the rest of it. And it didn't come across, it didn't ring true, do you know what I mean? So what I'm saying here is just do it yourself because the chances are you're going to do a better job. Shortly after I'd commenced this bottling, I realised that you can't just transform a, a non-peated or balanced infinity bottle into a peated bottle unless you add too much of one single malt that's heavily peated like Ardbeg and Kulila. Don't use Laphroaig. I'm just telling you, don't use Laphroaig. As soon as you put even a teaspoon of Laphroaig in, you're going to get Laphroaig. It's just the way it is. So I created a second bottle called Peat and Smoke using an old port bottle um, and I just etched in the, the, the what, it's, what it is there on the back because it says Peat and Smoke and put a wee ribbon out it, around it just to fancy it up slightly and make it stand out. So this contains Peat Monster 2010, Arbego Gadal, Arbeg Cory Vrachen, Port Ellen 21 year old, Port Charlotte, Glendronic, Peated, uh, Highland Park and Lagavulin Distillers Edition. So that's essentially what I've got there, a bottle of that. I'll, I'll come to the peated version in another review. Sticking to this one, I've introduced the bottles now. Here's how you do it. First of all, get your bottle. It's a champagne bottle, nice and sturdy, or a nice simple decanter if you want to make it a little bit fancier. I'm going to leave the decanter for another day. I have another mission for that. So with the, the bottle that I'm going to use, get your salvaged cork, make sure it fits tightly and securely, and then just kind of customise your bottle the way you want it before you put anything in it. So if you want to get one of these etching um, drills, then you could use a Dremel, you could just etch on it infinity and beyond. Um, my forever bottle, the year 2022, <coughs> just whatever. And you can either have stickers in the back to record what whiskies are in it, or you can get yourself a separate notebook and then you can just keep it as a bottle diary and a little diary of your tastings over the years which you date and sign and it becomes at one with the bottle which is probably a good idea it's something I've not done because it's not my style and then what you do is you pour some whiskey into the bottle now there's two ways you can do this small mates you can either get a home brewers um, gravity tube which is marked down the outside so that you can accur accurately measure, very carefully measure the amount and volume of whatever whiskey you're putting into the bottle into this first and then pour it into the bottle. But this really, really comes down to, do you want to be very, very surgical about it? Now, the benefit of that is that at the end you have a successful surgery. You have an absolute precision blending almanac of what's gone into that bottle. And also, you might as well, when you're pouring into your glass, pour into the measurer so you can pour out exactly what your cup was coming out, put the date on it. So you can, in other words, you can be really, really in a rack about it. Or you can do what I do, get a perfectly competent modern starter single malt and just go for it. Now what I'm doing is taking a very flavoursome but youngish so-so single malt which to be honest was a bit too expensive and it's not one that I care to keep in the long term so I'm putting it to good use. And as you can see I've but a third filled the bottle. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a good start. Now what you might want to do before you go any, any further is taste a little bit from that bottle and don't finish the, 
donor bottle too soon because when you come back to tasting this you might want to taste them side by side because it's the best way of seeing the absolute difference between them because with this one I'm now going to add other single malts here's how it works if you use good single malts you will get good single malt results sure you could add bourbon to scotch whiskey cognac to scotch whiskey but I recommend, particularly to start with, to avoid confusing yourself. Stick to one spirit. If it's bourbon, stick to bourbon. Rum, stick to rum. Rye, stick to rye. Scotch whiskey, stick to scotch whiskey. Irish whiskey, stick to Irish whiskey. So this is a lighter whiskey. Very different from this whiskey. How much am I going to add to this? Hang a bit, a wee bit of zinc coming off, don't want that going in the whiskey. How much am I going to add of this? Out of this? It's lighter. It's brighter. It's got a good intensity. I can add a fair amount. It's up to you, by the way, if you want to decide that all the whiskies you put into your Infinity bottle are unchill filtered in natural colour. You do have that option if you want to be a purist. So we've added a reasonable amount of bourbon matured, really good quality single malt. What next? I could stick to adding bourbon matured whiskies, but mix it up. Don't be frightened, be bold. Put your best foot forward and do what I do and what I recommend is just wing it, be instinctive. See using this, it's fine to start with, but once you've used it, lose it. Wing it. This is the way you learn. You learn instinctively. So here we have some old Glendronic Revival. Um, this is the, what does it say? Does it say unchill filtered natural colour? I'm sure it does somewhere. I'm sure this is the older one. Anyway, I'm supposed to say in the box. Sherried, sherried flavoursome whiskey. How much are we going to add from out of this? More or less? It depends. If you want a sherry monster in the making, add more. But if you want to balance it out and not lose the other influences of the whiskies you've already added, add less. Otherwise, you're going to get too much sherriness. That'll do. See you later if I want more of this. I can add more of this. Finally, I may choose to add a little bit of peated whiskey. Very important. So important. Unless you particularly want to lose the balance of your contributing whiskies early on in your bottling. Don't use much peated whiskey. Use a lot less than you think you might need. I'm actually going to use a teaspoon to measure this in. A teaspoon. Five millilitres. I've done that to actually demonstrate how little peated whiskey you should add initially unless you want to just go for it and get a big peat moment. Now, at this point, general swirl around the glass, bottle, sorry, and pour yourself a wee dram. In the knowledge that you have the other whiskies that you've contributed to this still around as a point of reference and they're all sitting over here on the on the fireplace which isn't burning today because I don't need to otherwise it wouldn't they wouldn't be sitting there it's interesting the first thing I notice is the original Glen Scotia which dominates the volume of this bottle had charred casks and oloroso cask influence finishes on basic 
bourbon matured whiskey. What's happened is the adding the Glendronic has added to the sherryness of it. Adding the Glencadam has given a, a lightness to it and adding just a tiny drop of the Lechek 10 year old peated whiskey has just crisped up the sherryness but even more so it's actually rounded off the charred casks that were used for maturing the Glen Scotia. There is now a light and mild red fruit note, there's a raspberry note in it, there's more of a vanilla note, there's a soft beautiful barley sugar note and does it smell better than the host bottling? Um, instantly, yes, and you'll find this when you actually put them side by side. Most important now is leave the bottle alone for a month, let the whiskies the blend marry together, let them blend together. You now have a blended malt here, but at the moment it's just mixed together. The whiskies that contribute to this need to settle down and they need time to do so. Give it a month, walk away from this bottle, put it in the back of your cupboard, come back a month later and pour a dram and actually nose it in relation to your contributory whiskies. See what you notice. The strengths of the whiskey, whiskies that have gone into this have varied from cask strength 54.7% to 46% and thereabouts. I recommend that if you can you use higher strength liquors whether it be bourbon, cognac rum or scotch whiskey whatever your infinity bottle is going to be based on try and keep it as high an alcoholic strength as possible because it actually enhances the dynamic of smell and taste over time. It also helps to preserve it from excessive oxidization. Now you'll notice this bottle is only half full. There's a big air gap in there. Is that oxidizing? Oh yes it is. So what? I don't care. These are young whiskies I've put in. It's not like they're old fragile ones. Later on, as the bottle fills up, I'll put some older whiskey in to give it some age. And I'll bring it out every month and I'll drop in, pop in another bottle, another from another bottle, and then a month later from another bottle. And do you know what? I'll give you an upgrade in this. Um, I'll give you. A, I'll come back to this during the year and let you know how it's getting on. If you've got any questions, um, I, I tend to deal with them most effectively. They, they're highlighted to me um, on my Patreon channel called Ralphie, rather than on the Go the. YouTube channel comment section because I get so many comments these days compared to the old days um, which is a good thing but I just can't get through every single one the way I used to but thank you for your patience malt mates I hope you found this beginners class to be useful and I would conclude by saying that one of the best ways to learn is to encourage your malt mates and pals whether they be in the same village, town or city as you, same whiskey club, or whether they be online. Um, if you're in an online forum saying, right, I'm starting an affinity bottle, who else is up for it? Let's all do it together and see what we get. And see at the end of it all, see a year later, we'll all meet up for a wee night out. We'll have a meal, no curries, no chilies. We'll have a nice meal. And afterwards, we'll just bring out our bottles and we'll share them around and talk about them. Hey, it's a plan.